I actually enjoy making baskets. And it doesn't have to be any particular basket as long as it's a basket. I was born and raised here on Indian Township. And I lived for a while at Pleasant Point. Oh, I started with scraps. My mother and I never allowed us to uh, touch the good material. Well, I was the only one that was interested in basket making. So uh, she says, once you get to learn how to make baskets, then you can touch the good stuff. You know, she says, but in the meantime, use the scraps that you can find off, the, you know, on the floor. So that's how I started. And I was doing like little, you know, little candy baskets and stuff like that. When my mother realized that I really had an interest in it, then she started sharing her good materials. All the people that I remember that I picked up different things from were all beautiful people. And they were all elders. People that I associated with ever since I was a child. My mother loved to make uh, uh, the flower top baskets, the ones that I make all the time. She gave me all her forms shortly before she passed. And uh, there is two baskets uh, with flowers that she always made. And as far as I can remember, she was the only one that made baskets like that. And also strawberries. We make the old-fashioned strawberries, which is shaped different than most of the other people that do make strawberries. And her other favorite type that she used to make is a handkerchief basket, which George made here. And it's basically the same thing, but she made hers a different style. You see, I lost my mom two years ago. And she and I used to sit down to make baskets all the time. And at that time, we spoke Indian fluently. And now, very seldom you find anybody that speaks Passamaquoddy language. And it's so nice to hear people talk, uh, to converse with, you know, at different times and different places. I used to work for my mother-in-law, Frances Richards. She made five baskets and she also had men working in her workshop yes. to do the scale baskets. And between my husband, myself, and at least four or five other people, we usually have a hundred baskets from Monday morning to early Saturday morning. And everybody shared whatever they had, whether it's food, basket making, braiding, whatever. It's still, you know, we were welcome to do whatever we wanted to do with, the, with our neighbors. And that was the best part of it. I've, I've already... Uh, split some with my splitter and now I'm gauging it out to, to diff different pieces and uh, I will do this until I can get all my materials ready but it takes a long time to do this and I'm trying to get it all ready so it won't get all won't waste on me so I'm gauging it out in different sizes now this particular piece is one eighth of an inch that I use for weavers and I'll get a whole bunch of them then I use this one here which is three sixteenths I use them for the curly baskets and then I use the very tiny weaves which I don't know what size this is but it's smaller than the three than the than the one eighth so I, I'm doing all different sizes. Yeah, that's a weaver strip. This is a weaver strip. Yeah. And it won't be one of the real tiny weavers. It'll be the one eighths because it's a little bit on the thick side, but not thick enough to use for standards. I separate every size so I can have like one, two, three, four, five different sizes that I'm doing at the same time. So right now I'm getting materials ready. Uh, for my next workshop. And I'll have some people braiding, some people trying to, you know, split ash, and other people already started to make baskets. So we have different phases on different workshops that we have. I will teach as many people as possible as, as long as they want to learn. That, that means, you know, the tribal, tribal members. At one point, I thought we were going to lose it because I can actually count how many people made baskets here at, 
there was only about half a dozen of us. That's included some of the elders that were alive at that time. And now, I think that you're going to find more, more and more kids that are interested. I started doing it because it was something that my grandmother did, and I kept doing it because it was something I enjoyed doing. And now I keep doing it because I realize it's a really important uh, cultural aspect of this tribe. Everyone that's there wants to be there. They want to learn how to start a basket. They said they've learned how to weave around a basket, but never actually taught the first stages of it, which is making the bottom part of the basket. So we did all that this week, and I think maybe not every one of them will take it up as they get older, but I think if we continue teaching the children the importance of basket making, you're going to find it's going to survive.